Hello friend welcome to the English Story English 30 Days channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today in this video I'm going to tell you about my experiences at school and how I learned English. In this story, I talk about the classes I attended, my teachers, and other students from different countries in my class. I also discuss my challenges and successes in learning English and share the advice I received from my teachers. I like this class because there are students from many different countries in our class. Some students are from Europe, some students are from South America. The next day is Wednesday and I go to school again. I am happy that I go to this class not only because of our teacher. There is also one student from Japan and one from South Korea in my class. This is good for me because the students don't speak my native language. When I speak to them, I have to use only English. It is very good for my practice. Today, we have another new student in our class. Her name is Sarah. She is from Argentina. At the beginning of the lesson, Sarah says that she thinks that she doesn't have a talent for studying languages, but she wants to work hard to improve. My teacher asks her, why do you think that you don't have a talent? She answers, I think that I don't have a talent because my sister learns English very fast, but for me it is difficult. Then our teacher asks everybody in the class, do you think that you have a talent for learning languages? Please put your hand up if you believe that you have a talent. I look around the class and nobody puts their hands up. My teacher smiles. Then she says, now I want to tell you something. Many people think that you need to have a talent if you really want to learn a new language. I agree, yes, you need to have a talent if you want to learn a new language. But I also believe that you already have a talent for learning languages. Why do you have a talent? You have a talent because you have already learned one language, which is your native language. You were successful at learning your native language and you speak that language fluently. All people who are able to learn their native language have a talent for learning languages. Why do many students believe that they are not talented? The reason is this, there are people who are super talented. Yes, it is true. These super talented people remember new words very fast and for a longer time. Maybe you know these people. Maybe it is somebody at your work or in your family. There are not many of these people, but they exist. I believe that this might be Sarah's sister as well. Learning a new language is fun for these people and they can do it easily. Sarah says that it is true that her sister is really better than everybody else. Our teacher continues, it is true that these super talented people exist. It is a fact and we cannot do anything about it. Yet it is not a problem. The problem is that we compare ourselves to these people, and if we don't learn as fast as they do, we think that we are not talented. I want to ask you for one thing, please do not compare yourself to these super talented people. Yes, they are lucky and they have an advantage. But you might be lucky too and you are super talented at other things. Maybe you are more talented than others when you learn to sing, swim, play tennis, count numbers, cook, or repair hair or cars. People are not all the same. It is the beauty of this world. Now you can believe that you are also talented. Maybe not super talented, but talented. When you believe that you are talented, learning English will be easier for you. These words from our teacher are very helpful for us. I know that I am talented at playing football and tennis. Now I know that I am also talented at learning English. It is great. What is also great is that there is a school party in the evening. I really look forward to this party. I know that some girls from our class are going there. I hope that our new student Sarah is also going to the party. I have known Sarah for only one day, but I like her a lot. If you can speak your native language, then you have a talent for learning English and how to speak fluently. On Monday, I go to school again. Our teacher asks us how Friday's school party was. One student says that the party was great. We had a lot of drinks and a lot of fun. The girls from our class enjoyed the party as well. I enjoyed the party a lot because Sarah was there. I could talk to her and we danced together. It was all very nice. There were also two boys from my football team at the party. These boys were from Brazil. Their English skills were basic. They could speak only in short sentences, but they were extremely funny at the party. They made a lot of jokes about life in England, about other players from our team, and about girls from their class. Everybody laughed. Their sentences were very short with only three or four words, but they were able to speak fluently. When we speak about the party, I tell my teacher, it was really interesting to see that somebody who doesn't know many words can already speak fluently. I know some students who are at a much higher level and have a hard time speaking. My teacher says, this is really interesting. I can tell you that the two boys from your football team showed you what all students should do. The boys used what they knew. 
They cared only about what was really important, which was communication. Then one girl asks, so what should we do if we want to speak English fluently? Should we go to parties and make jokes? My teacher says, first, let me explain what fluent speaking is. Many students think that fluent speaking is fast speaking with a lot of words and perfect grammar. However, there is a better, more correct definition of fluent speaking. Fluent speaking is speaking without long pauses. Some people can do it at 1,000 words and some people can do it at 2,000 words. Yet there are also people who know 3,000 words and aren't able to speak fluently. If you want to speak fluently, you have to practice speaking. There is no other way to improve your fluency. Speaking is a physical activity. It is like playing a musical instrument. If you want to play the violin, you need to train the connection between your brain and the muscles in your fingers. When you want to speak well, you need to train the connection between your brain and the muscles in your mouth. If the connection between your brain and your mouth is not regularly trained, you can't speak fluently no matter how many words you know. You can't complain that you can't speak fluently if you don't practice speaking often. Maybe you have this experience. You meet a foreigner who wants to speak with you in English. You want to say ideas that are in your head, but you aren't able to do it. You can't find the right words. Then, when you end the conversation and play it back in your head, you see that you actually know the right words, but by then the conversation is already finished. Why do you experience such situations? Because you have little training. Your speaking isn't automatic. It is not automatic because you don't practice it often enough. When you want to speak fluently, I recommend speaking for at least 30 minutes a day. You can speak to a real person. If you don't have a real person to speak to, you can do thinking aloud. It is necessary to really think aloud and not only think in your head. You need to practice the connection between your brain and your muscles. You can do this by thinking aloud. Does it make sense? Yes, says the girl. If you want to speak fluently, speak for 30 minutes every day. What is the best school?